Welcome to the Child and Adult Care Food Program budget training. In this presentation, we will be going through the new budget process for Agreement Year 2025. Before we dig into the budget process, do you know that USDA requires all CACFP sponsors to be VCA? Do you know what VCA means? Regulation 7 CFR 226.6 B2 7 requires sponsoring organizations to comply with each of the performance standards. Each sponsoring organization must submit sufficient information to document that it is financially viable, it is administratively capable of operating the program, and it has internal controls in effect to ensure accountability. VCA stands for Viability, Capability, and Accountability. It is our responsibility at the state agency to ensure every sponsor is VCA when they start CACFP. We are also required to verify VCA when sponsors renew their agreement with CACFP every year, and also when we conduct administrative reviews every two or three years, so long as your program is operating within the requirements. These documents listed on your screen are the VCA playbook. If you don't know the rules to the game, you can't play, or at least we can guarantee you won't play well. Make sure you have access and or copies of these documents and that you use them during the agreement and budget process. During our last audit from USDA, it was determined that the main CACFP budget did not meet all the requirements of 7 CFR 226.6 and FNS Instruction 796-2 Revision 4, specific to areas of cost allocation. We also received significant feedback from CACFP sponsors last fall that the budget in CNP Web is confusing and the directions are not clear. With guidance from USDA, we reached out to Rhode Island Child Nutrition Programs to look at their CACFP budget system and decided to adopt and adapt that budget for Maine CACFP. While this news may seem overwhelming, the program and the instructions are very clear and our team at the Maine CACFP believes this will assist everyone during the agreement renewal. Moving forward, when we activate the 2025 application, the previous sponsor budget will not appear in CNP Web for any CACFP years past and present. If you need us to repopulate the budget for your program for a short period of time, we can, but moving forward, there will be no budget listed on the application tab in CNP Web. Did you know that there are different types of CACFP sponsors in Maine? There are sponsors of multiple centers or daycare home providers called sponsoring organizations, and there are independent center sponsors. An independent sponsor enters into an agreement directly with the state agency and can be a single child care center, a single at-risk after-school care center, a single outside school hours center, or a single adult day center. This is important to know because Moving forward, sponsors of independent centers only need to submit a budget once every three years if the independent center remains in good standing with CACFP and does not require follow-up administrative reviews and no budget line item changes more than 15%. Examples of situations that could affect budget line items could be adding an additional meal service or increasing license capacity. For agreement year 2025, which is this upcoming year, all sponsors will be submitting a budget. Moving forward, independent centers will need to submit a budget only on the year they are scheduled for an administrative review. This includes any high-risk sponsors scheduled for a follow-up review or any unfortunate independent centers that are selected for a review outside of their normal schedule due to the administrative review percentage requirement from USDA. You will find everything you need for the CACFP budget on the checklist tab in CNP Web for year 2025. We tried to organize the checklist tab so that folks were e easily able to identify what was a budget-related form. 
Please be aware, depending on the type of business you have and what you may include in your CACFP budget, you may or may not need to upload some of those documents. The instructions in the budget form itself will give you clear guidance on what you need to do. You can see here that any form we provide, you are able to download right from the checklist tab. You will then upload completed forms to that same location using the blue upload button. You can also find links for budget documents and instructions on our resources webpage. To get there, go to main.gov backslash DOE backslash schools backslash nutrition backslash programs. If you scroll down, you will see Child and Adult Care Food Program. Click the link that says CACFP Resources. Next, you will click on the blue drop down titled CACFP Budget. And it will show you all the current CACFP budget documentation. Now I'm going to take you through the new budget Excel template. I will walk you through each tab and how it should be completed. First, you will find the new budget form on the checklist tab titled Budget Annual Budget Form. It's important to know that the sponsors of centers and daycare homes will need to submit two separate budgets as usual, one for centers and one for homes. You will click on the green Excel template to download the form. I also recommend that you click on the red PDF link on this checklist line as well as it will provide step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete the annual budget form. So when the Excel document opens at the bottom of the document, you will see gray tabs. If you click on these gray tabs, it will take you to different sections of the budget. The first tab we are on is the Instructions tab. The Instructions tab should be the first place you review when starting your budget. It includes valuable instructions, best practices, and links to required documents. We ask that prior to starting the budget, you read and have readily available the procedures for annual CACFP budget form, the annual CACFP budget guidance, FNS instruction 796-2 revision 4, and the USDA guidance for management plans and budgets. All four of these documents will provide you with guidance needed to complete the budget. Links to all documents and forms and more are embedded in the budget form itself. Just click the blue hyperlink and it will take you to the web page where the form resides. And also included on the instructions tab is the certification statement that will need to be completed by the authorized representative. Next, we're going to move on to the income tab. We're going to focus on the first part of Schedule A. As you go through the budget form, you will see areas highlighted in blue. These are called data entry cells. These are the only areas you will be able to enter information. If you click on a white cell, those are called formula cells, and these cells should be locked, meaning you can't enter any information into them. The formula cells are what force the calculations in the background of this document. You are going to start with the Sponsor Information section. This is where you'll enter in the sponsor name, agreement number, date, and revision. This is similar to CNP Web. The original document should be revision zero. Moving forward, any other revisions would be numbered one, two, three, etc. In the number of CACFP sites section, sponsors of centers will enter in the number of CACFP center sites. Sponsors of daycare homes will enter the number of daycare home providers in this section. The next section is the projected CACFP income. This is where centers will enter in the estimated CACFP reimbursement and cash in lieu of commodities. To calculate estimated annual food program reimbursement, all sponsors of centers must use the estimated annual food program reimbursement worksheet, which is linked here. For daycare home sponsors, this section is a little different. You will be asked to enter in the number of daycare home providers in each category. Once entered, the spreadsheet will automatically calculate the annual administrative reimbursement estimate. 
the estimated annual food program reimbursement worksheet for centers is an Excel spreadsheet. The spreadsheet has a tab for each site and it also has a summary tab. The first step is to click on the tab titled Site 1. The next step is to enter the site name. Then the sponsor must enter the current reimbursement rates. There is a link to the current rates within the form. The second step is to enter your anticipated enrollment for each meal determination category. The third step is to enter your estimated number of meals per day and the estimated number of serving days in a year. The fourth step is to enter the current cash in lieu reimbursement rate for the current fiscal year. You would do this for each of your sites and then click on the summary tab. The summary tab will total the anticipated reimbursement for the year and provide you with the figures you need to enter into the budget. As a caveat, we at the state agency are working to make this process easier. We have a report currently be being created with our CNP web developers. Once finished, we will provide all sponsors access to this report. It will allow sponsors to pull all their CACFP reimbursement information per month and per year. In the 2026 year, we will allow a copy of this report to be uploaded in place of the reimbursement calculator. The information from the estimated annual food program reimbursement worksheet is then entered into the CACFP budget form. Sponsors of daycare homes, if you have CACFP surplus or what we typically call CACFP carryover, you will enter that information here. If you do not have carryover, you will simply leave it blank. As a reminder, CACFP is a supplemental program and you will not receive sufficient reimbursement to cover all expenses of running the CACFP. If your budgeted CACFP expenses exceed your CACFP reimbursement, you must list unrestricted non-program funds that are available to fund this deficit. And Section 2 of Schedule A on the Income tab is where you will enter this information. So, you would enter the source, the amount, and any explanation you think would be helpful for main CACFP reviewers. Unrestricted funds are funds that are available for any purpose. This could include Head Start funds, tuition, parent fees, and any unrestricted earnings. Entering that information here will serve to establish fiscal viability of the CACFP in your program. It is important to know after going through the budget, if there is a CACFP deficit and you have not entered unrestricted non-program funding, your budget will not be approved. It may be helpful to complete the operating and administrative tabs and then revisit the non-program fund section. At the bottom of Schedule A income tab, a total of all income and unrestricted non-CACFP funds flow into the section. Again, these are white cells, so these are formula cells, and you will not be able to enter anything into the section. This totaling format will be the same for the operating and administrative tabs, which we will cover in a few minutes. Next, we're going to go over the operating tab. The operating tab is where you're going to enter the bulk of your cost. The minimum required sections for this tab are purchased food costs, non-food supplies, and labor costs. The other sections must be completed if CACFB funds will be used for those costs. Otherwise, you can leave those sections blank. Do not feel obligated to complete every section if it does not apply to your operation. Some high-level items before we dive into this section, you'll notice that we are asking for a lot more detail and a lot more supporting documentation than we have in the past. This is to ensure that we are in line with regulation as required by USDA and to minimize back and forth requests. We know this will be an adjustment to get through this process for the first year, but our hope is that it will make the process more efficient going forward. I wanted to point out that each section of the budget has a brief description of what is being asked and what supportive documentation listed in red will be required. I also recommend opening or having a copy of the document, Procedures for the Annual Budget, 
as this has line by line, section by section, instructions on how the budget should be completed. Again, that document is linked in the Instructions tab and is also available on the Resources webpage. It is also important to note, as you're going through the operating and administrative expenses, most items will require you to have an allocation percentage. This is what the old budget was missing. You will need to include an explanation for the rationale for how you produce the allocation percentage. Alternatively, you will see on the checklist tab in CNP Web that, eat, that you can now upload documentation for each section as a separate document if needed. Now we are going to start with one of the most important costs, food. USDA expects the food cost to be a significant portion of your budget, at least 40 to 50 percent. A couple of items to note here. If you have vended meals, you must have an approved and fully executed contract uploaded on the checklist tab. If your organization is self-prepared, you must provide support for how you produce your food costs. As a reminder, last year at the annual training, we discussed the requirement of tracking CACFP income and expenses. While this is not new, this is a screenshot of the CACFP financial workbook provided to everyone last year. While your agency is not required to use this specific workbook, you are required to track all CACFP income and expenses. Expenses include food, non-food, and kitchen supplies, food service labor and benefits, admin labor and benefits, contracted services, kitchen equipment, CACFP travel, and other miscellaneous CACFP expenses. If you use a separate accounting software, your system needs to be coded so that you can pull this information quarterly as you are required to revise your budget if necessary. If you use the CACFP Financial Tracking Workbook for 2024, you can add up the quarterly reports and it will provide justification for the annual food costs. You can use this workbook and totals to justify your budget estimates for food and other items in your budget. This justification can be uploaded on the checklist tab for each applicable section. Next, we are going to move on to equipment. If applicable, you can add in equipment or durable supplies under $5,000 that you are planning to purchase with CACFP funds. This could include items like a fridge, small appliances, and a stove that are all under $5,000. I do want to note that you cannot include equipment purchased in the past in this section. You will also need to include detailed information about the equipment to be purchased and ensure you follow all applicable procurement regulations. You must have specific equipment in mind for this section to be approved. Also, if it's not fully applicable to the CACFP, then you must enter in the percent allocated to CACFP and in the sponsor explanation section, you need to write how you produce the allocation percentage. Next is equipment over 5,000. This is a capital expenditure and can only be charged to the program via depreciation expense. So what is depreciation? Depreciation is an accounting practice used to spread the cost of tangible or physical assets over its useful life. Depreciation represents how much of the asset's value has been used up in any given time period. Companies depreciate assets for both tax and accounting purposes and have several different methods to choose from. For more information on depreciation and the different types, what's allowed or not allowed, please look at FNS Revision 4, page 28 to 32. The formula in this budget section is set up to be a straight line depreciation. If you are using any other method of depreciation, it requires specific prior written approval. And again, please refer to FNS Revision 4 for more guidance on charging depreciation to the CACFP. The next section is non-food supplies, and this section will apply to most of you. This is where you would include your non-food supplies, such as dish detergent, cleaning supplies, and food storage supplies. Be specific with what you're including and make sure that you include your allocation percentage methodology. The next section is labor, and I do want to take a minute to point out that we've changed the way that labor costs will be presented in the management plan and in the budget. The labor costs are no longer by employee name, but by employee position. This should result in less line items if you have multiple people in the same position. 
For example, if you have two teachers that serve meals, you now only need one line item that encompasses both, if the pay rates are the same. Continuing with this example, we're going to complete the section together. We're going to assume the number of personnel is two. We are also going to assume that the program months are 12 and the hourly wage is 12. Please be aware if two individuals have different hourly wages, you'll need to separate line items. But for this example, they are going to have the same hourly wage. Next, we're going to input the hours spent a month in total for one teacher. I'm going to assume 160 hours, assuming a 40 hour work week, and I'm going to input 60 hours for the CACFP. I am assuming four weeks in a month for this example. It is okay if the salary month varies slightly. What's key in this example is that the allocation percentage is accurate and the salary is reasonable. I do want to note that you should not multiply the hours or the hourly rate by the number of personnel entered. This system is assuming there is one person in the position and the formula is set up to multiply that by the number of personnel in that specific position. Next, I'm going to put in the average benefits. Let's just say $125. And like I said before, this is a spreadsheet that is calculating monthly and annual totals and then multiplying by two for the two staff. Before we move forward, I'd like to go into more depth about the allowable items that you can include in the benefit cell. Allowable CACFP benefits can include health benefits, weekly vacation leave, retirement benefits, life and disability insurance, you can also include federal, state, and local payroll taxes, including Social Security and unemployment. Next up is specific job duties. This is a very important step, and it must describe the CACFP duties assigned. Let's say, for example, you have a teacher that is involved in the meal service. In this column, you would include serving meals and taking meal counts. At the bottom of the CACFP budget form, you will see the F tab has a summary of required duties. This list of job duties should look familiar to everyone. These are duties we want to see documented in your budget under specific job duties. I color coded the food service labor duties as green, which you can see the food labor is green in the operations budget, and the admin labor is yellow, which is yellow in the administrative budget. Because this budget includes the staffing plan, the staffing plan in the CNP Web Management Plan number 25 no longer needs to be completed as part of the agreement renewal. However, with that said, if throughout the agreement year, staffing changes such as additional staffing positions are added or changed, those changes will be documented in the management plan question number 25. It is up to the sponsor to track those changes within their copy of the CACFP budget. Again, as you update your budget with changes, if any revisions cause any one budget line item to change 15% or more from the original, which will be uploaded on the checklist tab, the sponsor must contact the CACFP to file a revision to their budget in the system. I also wanted to point out for each of the labor and admin cost sections in the budget in red, it states the supporting documentation required is job descriptions of all the positions listed. We already asked for job descriptions to be uploaded on the checklist tab, and everyone should know that job descriptions must include all job responsibilities of the position, including all CACFP and all non-CACFP duties. Please pay close attention to what I'm about to share because this is new. The job description should break out the approximate percentages for each responsibility, non-CACFP duties, CACFP food service duties, and CACFP ad administrative duties. Now when we shared this at the annual training, we received feedback that obtaining job description changes can be incredibly burdensome for some larger organizations. So after much discussion, our office came up with a supplemental form that can be submitted along with the job descriptions that meets the requirements of the CACFP. Now on the checklist tab for the budget, job description, food service, and administrative, you will see a green Excel download. This download is called the Job Description Supplemental Form. If your, job, if your sponsorship does not want to adjust the job descriptions to come in line with the CACFP requirements, you can upload this document along with your job description. Please be aware the job description or the 
job description supplemental form must align with the budget. This is a screenshot of the job description justification form. You can see I filled it out for the classroom teacher at my site. For each employee, I must list all assigned duties and know a corresponding time for how long this employee works on those duties in a given week. Once completed, if you scroll to the bottom of the employee's duties section, the spreadsheet will total the employee's hours per week and provide a percentage of non-CACFP time, a percentage of CACFP food service time, and a percentage of CACFP admin time. The percentage will be based on the hours entered into the sheet. So if you have a part-time position that only works 20 hours a week, then that employee sheet should only total 20 hours. You must complete an employee sheet for each employee that has any CACFP duties. At the bottom of the spreadsheet, you will see there are 25 employee sheets. If you don't have 25 employees, just leave those sheets blank. Once all employee sheets are completed, there is a tab titled Staff Totals. This sheet pulls data from each employee sheet and puts it into one spreadsheet. As you can see on your screen, the information I entered for my classroom teacher on employee sheet number one was pulled, and now I can see the percentage of time for each of my employees. If I click on the blue hyperlink for employee number one, it will take me to that employee sheet and I can make changes if necessary. Again, if you can document duties and allocate time to non-CACFP, CACFP food service, and CACFP admin, on the job description itself, that's fine. But if you can't, please know that this form is available to help. Employee hours must be tracked by non-CACFP, CACFP food, and CACFP admin duties, and you must provide documentation. This has been a CACFP requirement for a long time, so it should not be a surprise to any sponsor. We heard feedback from CACFP sponsors during the annual training that tracking CACFP duties versus non-CACFP duties is burdensome, especially if sponsors are not paying any staff with CACFP funds. We took this concern to USCA and this was their response. The question was, are food labor and admin labor estimates required in the budget if CACFP reimbursement will only be spent on food and non-food costs? And the response was yes. All projected costs must be disclosed in the administrative budget and approved in advance. This is necessary for the state agency to determine the allowability, necessity, and reasonableness of all proposed expenditures and to assess if the sponsoring organization has the administrative and financial capability to operate the program. USDA then provided Maine with the regulations that require this type of information. If you want to pause and take note of the different regulations, feel free to do so now. As a resource to assist with this process, CACFP now has a time and attendance time and effort log that sponsors can use for their employees to track CACFP operating labor, admin labor, and non-CACFP labor separately. Much like the financial tracking workbook, this specific form is not required, but employees should have cost codes to allocate their daily time correctly on their timesheets, and sponsors must be able to provide that documentation to the state agency during reviews. The nice thing about this log is that it has a place for the employee and supervisor signatures, as well as a, la a labor cost charge calculator. The office staff can select hourly or salaried from the drop-down list and then enter the hourly rate. This will provide your program with total operational CACFP wages and admin wages for the month. This is available on the CACFP resources webpage under the CACFP budget. I also want to highlight something else about this labor section. You want to make sure that on the operating tab you only include hours spent on operating tasks. If this position also has administrative tasks, you would want to enter that on the administrative tab. You don't want to double count the hours on both tabs. For example, let's say we have a cook that is allocated 100% to CACFP under operating. That time should not also be included on the administrative task budget. Moving on, this next section is contracted services. 
If you are operating with a contracted service and you're including it in the CACFP budget, this will require specific prior written approval and a copy of the contract will need to be uploaded on the checklist tab. Please note this is only for non-food contracts. Purchase food contracts are entered in the food cost section that we discussed earlier. Examples of operating contracted services can include equipment rental or maintenance contracts, janitorial contracts, trash removal, and independent contractors who provide nutritional services. Please keep in mind if you issue an individual A1099, that individual is an independent contractor and not an employee. The individual cannot be listed in the labor section and must be in the contracted service section, and you must receive prior written approval. In Maine, there are not many CACFB sponsors that receive enough income to include items on their budget that require specific prior written approval, but it does happen. I just wanted to briefly show those sponsors what to do. We now have a specific prior written approval form, which is linked in the instructions tab posted on our webpage and available as a download on the checklist tab in CNP Web. Please make sure to follow all the directions on the form prior to uploading the completed document on the checklist tab. If you include items in the budget that require specific prior written approval, we will not approve your budget until this form is uploaded on the checklist tab in CNP Web. The next section is titled Other Operational Costs, Miscellaneous Food Service Expenses. This is not very common, however, you can use this section for any other allowable expense that did not fit anywhere else in the budget. Please refer to the annual procedure step-by-step -step instructions for examples of costs that can be entered here. In Section 8B, you would enter in the mileage for CACFP food transportation costs and staff training. No, if you're claiming mileage, it has to be at at the rate that's equal to or lower than the IRS rate, and you must keep a mileage log. You will also be required to certify that you will keep a mileage log for documentation. Another new budget section for Maine CACFP due to the USDA audit is the facility and utilities cost percentage allocable to the CACFP. The percentage is calculated within this spreadsheet and will flow to the appropriate cells. You must complete this section if you're planning to allocate facilities or utility costs, and if you don't complete all the required cells, it's not going to calculate correctly. CACFP regulations require that facilities or utilities are allocated by both square footage and program time versus total time use. I want to walk through an example of how this should be completed. So. We are going to say that the center is open for 52 weeks a year, and we are also going to say it is open for 50 hours per week. We're going to assume that the center is 1,000 square feet, and you have a kitchen that's 300 square feet, and your food storage is 100 square feet. You can see there is a other cell. This is not common, but let's say you, ha you don't have a kitchen, but you use your classroom to serve meals and store food. You could enter that square footage and enter in a description so we know what that represents. The next step is to enter the hours per week that the area is used for CACFP food service. We're going to say the kitchen is used for 15 hours a week and the food storage is used for 5 hours a week. You will see that the spreadsheet has now calculated a percentage of facility expenses applicable to the CACFP. Next, we're going to enter in a lease expense. So we're going to say it's a rental lease from the dropdown. And let's say the owner is ABC Corp and the monthly cost is $3,000. You'll see that the annual cost is multiplied by 12 months in a year. The percentage allocated to CACFP just flows from what we already completed and the spreadsheet will give you the total cost of the CACFP portion of the lease. A very important part of this section is the question, are utilities or other items included in the lease? You must indicate what other items are included. If the utilities are included in the lease, you cannot separately list other items in the utility section that I will show you in a few minutes. Another important section to know is if the building is owned by the institution. If it is, you cannot add your mortgage expense and allocate it for owned buildings. For owned buildings, you are limited to depreciation over a 30-year life. 
please make sure to refer to the Procedures Guide in FNS 796-2, Revision 4, for more guidance. The last fillable section for the Operations tab is Utilities. I want everyone to be aware not to double count the Facilities Lease expense in the Utilities on both the Operating and Administrative tab. For most organizations, I would expect that the facilities are going to be operational. Then, in this Utilities section on the screen, you can include utility costs that were not included in the lease agreement. Very similar to the facility cost, the utility cost will utilize the percent of facility expenses that are allocable to CACFP. Another thing to note is, the wa is that waste could be appropriate to include in either the utility section or the contracted services section. The allocation percentage calculated based on square footage may not actually portray benefits usage by the program. If this is the case, then you can include it in the contracted services. And then again, as I mentioned earlier, every budget tab will have a total cost to CACFP section at the bottom of the form. The administrative tab is set up very similar to the operating tab, so I won't spend much time on it. Again, there is a labor section for administrative duties. You will complete this just like you completed the food operation labor budget, making sure to not include food operation costs in the admin side. For the facility cost section in the admin budget, I just want again to clarify that any operation of food service should be listed in the operation tab. However, this admin facility section may be used by a sponsoring organization of centers that rents office space for its operation of the CACFP, or in some less common cases, a sponsor may have facility expenses in both operating and administrative if they have office space and a kitchen and a classroom in the same building that they use for CACFP. This section also has a summary at the bottom for CACFP costs. Next, we're going to move on to the Summary tab. All information entered on the Income and Operating and Admin tabs all flow into this section. I just want to send out a reminder that you should make sure to list on the Income tab all the funding sources and amounts available of non-program funds to pay for overclaims or other unallowable costs. This is where you're going to indicate if the budget amount will be paid with CACFP funds. If you select no, then you cannot use your CACFP reimbursement to support these costs. If an expense is included in the budget to give the sponsor a better idea of the true cost of operating CACFP, but that expense is not marked as funded with CACFP dollars, then it's considered to not be an allowable program expense. Here is the drop down where you would select yes or no. This last tab is the Summary of Supporting Documents. This is a required tab and should be used as a checklist. You should review which line items you included in your CACFP budget and ensure that you're providing the required documentation and uploads. Please remember if it's noted on your budget as being paid with CACFP funds, then the budget will not be approved without the supporting documentation being uploaded on the checklist tab in CNP Web. Similar to the specific prior written approval, we now also have a form for any sponsor that has a less than arm's length facility rental. A less than arm's length transaction occurs when one party to the transaction can exercise control or significantly influence the other. Regulation limits the amount that can be charged to CACFP from applying a 30-year life expectancy to the property's acquisition costs, plus the value of the land. This form will assist you in calculating what you can apply to the program. You will need to provide documentation that supports the acquisition costs and the value of the land. This form has the same allocation formula as the operations budget, and after completing the form, you would then go back to the operating section of the budget, and instead of selecting rental lease, you would select less than arm's length. On the less than arm's length form, it will provide you with an annual depreciation number. You must divide that number by 12 and enter it on the monthly cost column in the operating budget. Again, as a reminder, all budget documents will be listed in the checklist tab. All forms we provide are available to download here or on our resources webpage. 
As you're working on your CACFP budget, please feel free to reach out to our office anytime. Our contact information is on the screen as well as the Child Nutrition webpage. We will also be scheduling open office hours once a week in the near future, and that will be promoted on the CACFP listserv. Please make sure to utilize that one-on-one -on -one resource time. Here is the link to the non-discrimination statement. Thank you so much for your time and attention today.